call on you. First question, Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Cliff, with your playoff positioning uh, set and your opponent known, you know, how much of your attention goes to focusing on game planning for the series against Milwaukee versus your upcoming two seeding games? Yeah, I think we, we'll, we'll use some of our time. Um, today we did more watching ourselves from last night. Uh, we talked a little bit about, obviously, the fact that we're going to play Milwaukee. Tomorrow's a 1 o'clock game, so we'll – We'll concentrate on Brooklyn in the morning at the shoot around, and uh, you know then we'll you know then we'll start. Uh, you know the the two things are obviously to be prepared. You know to play against obviously a terrific team at both ends of the floor, uh, and also to concentrate on ourselves to get uh, our mentality right, the right readiness to start the series. Philip Rossman Reich. Uh, obviously, the, the news came down about Terrence having to leave the leave the campus. Um, is there any more detail that, that you can provide, or or, or or anything else that that you know that you can share with us about about his uh, departure or what, what caused him to leave? No, I mean it, it's it was a, you know medical issue, not COVID related, and um, you know the 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 uh, NBA physician here wanted him to get tested, and uh, so you know that's that's what happened. Eric Wilson, 1070. Uh, Coach, uh, you know, being down the number of players that you are, um, you know, how are you addressing these next two games with respect to time, minutes, and just getting themselves prepared for that series against Milwaukee? Yeah, it's tricky because of the fact that, um, you know, guys need minutes too. I mean, we're still, to me, we're still getting, guys are getting into rhythm and, you um, Last night was good for, for a bunch of people. Um, it's definitely hurting, I guess, our chemistry in terms of guys playing with their playing groups and like that. Um, but again, I mean, that's, that's the way our league works. Injuries are a big part of it. And I actually think the guys are handling it well. I think you're on mute, George. Uh, Cliff, um, when you when you look at uh, MCW, Evan and, and AG, how are they progressing? And uh, you know, were they? I don't know how much you know physical stuff you did today, but were they able to do any of it? Uh, MCW did some of it. Uh, AG and Evan were not able to. Uh, you know, they're all all three of those guys are diligent. They want to get back. They want to be on the floor with their teammates. So. Uh, they're doing everything they can, and they're making progress. And, um, you know, again, it's just day-to-day and how they feel. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we'll go to Jeff Zilgit, USA Today. Hey, Steve. Um, if you've been asked this before during the bubble, I apologize. But I presume you missed the fans, the energy in the arena. But is there anything about this environment that you really enjoy about coaching in? Yeah, I, I think the challenge has been, uh, I mean, something that I, I don't think any of us will ever forget. You know, I spent some time, you know, here we're in the same area with, uh, you know, Mike D'Antoni, who I work for, and Brett Brown, who I've been friends with for a long time. And I think that from purely a, a coaching uh, situation is it's so unique for the players and for everybody that um, – you know, uh, I think we did more team building uh, than I think an NBA team normally would do. Um, there's definitely getting a feel for where the players are at. Uh, it's different because you can't get into a routine because practice at a different time every day. And I think all of those things, um, you know, they add challenges to you know, trying to get your group going in a positive direction. And, and that part's been very interesting. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Steve, during the hiatus, when it was uh, – and then once it became clear that the, the bu- there would be a bubble and there would be a resumption of the season, it was obvious you'd either play Milwaukee or Toronto in the first round. How much uh, scouting work did you and your staff do uh, – preliminary in terms of preparing for a 
potential playoff series with either opponent? Yeah, we actually did a lot with three teams. We did Boston also. So um, we did study, I think like most teams did, study of ourselves. And then we did, I, I mean, I feel pretty comfortable with Milwaukee, Toronto, and Boston. Uh, we were able to spend, you know, actually a lot of time on all three of them. Uh, back to Philip Rossman, right? Hey, Coach. Um, it's, it's, I guess, a bit of an odd circumstance that you have uh, at least a week, you know, knowing who your playoff opponent is. Obviously, they have the same week, too. But is there an advantage in having that knowledge in, in hand or in pocket before the end of the season as you guys get ready for the playoffs eventually? Um, I mean, they're going to have the, they'll be in the same situation. And I mean, Bud's a great coach. They have a great coaching staff. So, um, I, you know, they'll be ultra prepared. Uh, but I mean, it, I, I guess in some ways it makes it easier than, you know, if, if it was, if we didn't know until, you know, Thursday, um, you know, we're able to, you know, with with the members of our staff who are back at Amway, uh, we'll be able to get our playoff books here earlier and uh, the video and everything that we'll use to prep the guys on Friday. Ryan Welch, WKMG. Go ahead, Ryan, you're on mute. Okay, we'll go to Josh Cohen, OrlandoMagic.com. Hey, Cliff, uh, just based on your previous matchups with Milwaukee, I know they have many strengths, but what would you say is their number one strength amongst them all? Well, you have to be able, I mean, they're terrific offensively and they're so well coached at both ends of the floor. But I think the biggest thing you have to be able to do is you have to be able to score. And, uh, you know, they play more, uh, you know, old time NBA defense. I mean, they, they're not going to switch it nearly as much as most teams. Um, they help more uh, the way we used to help, uh, but they are super disciplined. They play with a great effort at the defense of the floor and terrific technique. So, um, you know, if you look at them, they're, I think by quite a bit, the best defensive team in our league by the numbers this year. And, um, you know, that's we're going to have to be locked into ball movement, trying to spread them out, and we're going to have to make three point shots. Okay, we have time for a few more. Uh, Dan Savage. Cliff, in regards to your matchup tomorrow against the Nets, uh, what have you seen them improve on since you saw them last? And, it, you know, it seems like their assist numbers are way up, assist to turnover ratios better. You know, how well are they moving the ball? No, and playing at a I mean, just a breakneck speed. I mean, the ball after makes two, they're getting the ball in and up the floor quickly. Um, you know, they're four out uh, with a roll game the majority of times. And, uh, you know, they got guys that can play off the dribble and, and they play very unselfishly. So uh, you've got to give them a ton of credit for the way they've played here. And they, they've been some really good teams. You're on mute again, George. Brian Welch. Okay, can you hear me? Yep. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Steve, I'm sure you can't just flip a switch when the playoffs begin. Just how important is the confidence of this team these next two games here? Obviously, you've lost four in a row. Yeah, that's why I, I think also the, uh, you know, these last two games, not that they're, you know, must wins or anything, but we – you, you can't just, uh, you know, say the night before you start, say, hey, we're going to play better tomorrow. It's still about developing habits uh, and discipline to a way to play that you, that you can function well in this league. And our guys know that. Um, you know, we did some good things last night, but we just made too many mistakes. And, uh, you know, we had a chance, you know, at plus five, we got to stop. Uh, we weren't able to secure the rebound. So that was the biggest play of the game. Um, and those are things that hopefully we learn from today and we'll do better tomorrow. Eric Wilson. Yeah, so coach, speaking along those lines, uh, you know, with practices and preparing for not only Brooklyn, but also the playoffs, do you see your focus maybe adjusting more to the defensive side of the ball when it comes to being prepared for those matchups? I think actually, uh, especially when you play the elite teams, 
you have to, again, you have to speak constantly about balance, about being able to play well in all three phases, offense, defense, and rebounding. And I think you have to prepare that way also. So, um, you know, when we start, I mean, we'll put the offensive and the defensive game plan in, you know, on the same day. And I think you try to, you know, we'll have three days to prepare or actually a little bit longer. Um, and I think you have to try to move those along at a similar speed. Anything else for Coach Clifford? Okay, thanks, Cliff. Thank you.